What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we are checking out the Potenzik D58. It is a 1080p remote tilt adjustable 5G Wi-Fi FPV camera RC quadcopter ready to fly and it comes in this nice aluminum case so let's open it up and check it out. All right, so let's take a look at the quad cup. They're looking pretty nice, all in black. Now, it came out of the case fully assembled, just like this, ready to fly. All you got to do is charge up the batteries, and you are good to go. Insert some batteries in the remote control, too, of course. Now, taking a look at the bottom, we got some LED light fixtures on each of the motor pods. The landing legs pre-attached. The camera also pre-attached. Now, this is a remote tilt adjustable from 0 to 90 degrees, 1080p 5G Wi-Fi FPV camera, so we should not have interference with the remote control. Now, one thing I noticed too is that this camera is soft mounted as well. There's a couple of rings, rubberized rings on each side of the camera, so hopefully we do get some jello free video recording. And here is a Wi-Fi antenna on this side and another Wi-Fi antenna on the other side. So hopefully we get some good distance also on the video feed as well. Now in the back we do have a DVR in which I have inserted a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Now it does not specify how many gigabytes of micro SD card it supports so I'm gonna be safe and just put a 32 gigabyte instead of a 64 gigabyte. So you are able to record photos and videos directly into the micro SD card as well as your phone app and into your camera roll as well. Now there's a push button power on and off switch in the rear on the top of the quadcopter and the battery bay is in the rear as well and here's the proprietary battery you just slide it in click it into place and you are good to go all you got to do is hit that power button for a couple of seconds to turn the quadcopter on squeeze the top and the bottom of the battery and you are able to slide it out and the battery is a 7.4 volt 1000 milliamp size battery good for about 15 to 18 minutes of flight time which is really nice and another nice thing is they provide you with two of these batteries so you will get a maximum of 30 to 36 minutes of flight time which is really nice but do rest for about five minutes in between these two batteries so you can cool down the motors all right let me take a little break here there is a police officer passing by All right, the police officer is gone now. So here is a bag of goodies that came out of the case. It contains a full set of props and also some end caps to put on top of the props and a screwdriver as well. And another bag of goodies containing the prop guards. Now these are just push-in type prop guards. So very easy to install. And if you are a beginner, do utilize the prop guards. It will help you save the props and in turn help you save the motors. Now here's the charge cable, a proprietary charge cable. So all you got to do is connect the pins and push it in and power source the USB. While it's charging, there's going to be a red LED. And once it is done charging, the LED will turn blue. Now it took me about an hour and a half to fully charge each one of these batteries now here's the instruction booklet a very thick instruction booklet it contains everything you need to know about this quadcopter the diagram of the quadcopter all of the parts diagram of the remote control and all of the functions of each of the buttons how to go about charging and how to go about removing the camera and how to go about calibrating the compass on this quadcopter. It is a GPS quadcopter and how to go about calibrating the accelerometer and how to go about arming and disarming the motors and also how to go about flying the quadcopter. And here's the QR code to download for the Wi-Fi phone app. It is called the Potenzik GPS Wi-Fi phone app. Free downloadable app in the app store. So go ahead and check it out. And lastly, here is the transmitter. Now the antennas do fold out 
but these are non-functional antennas but it does look nice and on the bottom you do have the phone clip as well and if you're not going to be using the phone clip it provides a nice little finger grip for your hands to hold the remote control on the top left there's a rotary dial that controls the 0 to 90 degree remote tilt adjustability of the camera here's the dedicated video button dedicated photo button and the power on and off sliding switch return to home button here's a GPS on and off button but you are only able to turn on or off the GPS while the quadcopter is on the ground with the motors locked you are not able to turn on or off the GPS while up in the air on the fly here's a follow me button here's a circle me button and here's the speed changing button speeds one two and threes can be had both sticks at the bottom and in will arm the motors of the quadcopter and both sticks bottom and in again will disarm the motors of the quadcopter and the pitch and roll stick to the bottom and to the right will calibrate the gyros of this quadcopter and to do some trim while the quadcopter is in the air down pressing on the throttle and do your trims that you want with the pitch and roll stick all right so let's go for a little demo flight with the potenzic d58 all right let's get started with the demo flight of the potenzic d58 it is looking pretty nice now i have the battery already inserted so we are good to go all i gotta do is hit the power button for a couple of seconds to turn on the quadcopter but what they want you to do first is power up the transmitter power up the transmitter and hold the throttle stick all the way down it will get the transmitter into a binding mode so powering up and holding the throttle all the way down will get all of the led lights to flash at all at one time now what you want to do is power up the quadcopter hold down the button for a couple of seconds and let go and now we are bound okay now what you are going to see is that there's going to be some LED lights that are going to be blinking on the left side of the quadcopter only. So there's green LEDs in the front and red LEDs in the rear. But on the right side, the LEDs are not flashing and that will indicate that it is bound and it is ready for compass calibration. So what you want to do is rotate the quadcopter horizontally a few times and a beep can be heard on the remote control now what happens is the LEDs on the left side go solid and now there's going to be LEDs on the right side that's going to be flashing so what you want to do is rotate the quadcopter with the nose facing up once twice and again the remote control is going to beep and it's going to send out another beep and that will indicate that the compass calibration is done and that will also indicate that second beep will also indicate that we have acquired all of the gps necessary for your gps functions to work now if you didn't hear that second beep all of the leds will be flashing all at the same time until you have acquired all of the gps satellites so we are good to go so now what you want to do is hold down the pitch and roll stick to the bottom and to the right that will calibrate the gyros of the quadcopter now we have fully calibrated the compass and the gyro of the quadcopter so we are good to go so both sticks to the bottom and in will arm the motors and both sticks to the bottom and in again will disarm the motors and you can go ahead and take off but first let's go ahead and start up the wi-fi phone app i'm going to be using my ipad so power up your device go into your settings and go into your Wi-Fi section of your settings and wait until the Wi-Fi network and here it is UDIRC GPS network go ahead and hit that it is a unsecured network wait until a check mark appears and you are connected so going into the app and here's how the app looks like Potenzic GPS it says so let me go ahead and hit that I believe it is a phone app so I'm able to shrink it down to the phone size or increase the size to fit the iPad so we got the D58 showing here there's the D60 as well as the D50 so we got the D58 and it says connected all right so I'm gonna hit go flying 
that'll get me in and here we got Wi-Fi FPV already so let's take a look oh yeah looking pretty nice nice fish eye lens 120 degree field of view so very nice 1080p all right so let's go ahead and take some photos and videos let's see if the photo button works on the hard remote there you go we have taken a photo let's see the video button works all right video icon is flashing as well so you are able to take photos and videos just with the hard remote because we do have a micro SD card inserted so you don't even need the Wi-Fi phone app you can fly this thing and record photos and videos blindly but it will record it so you can check it out afterwards all right so let's go ahead and make our rounds and take our photos I'm gonna be using my iPad to take the photos so I can see what I'm pointing at there you go photo there photo there photo there there's a slight delay after I hit the icon let's see oh solar eclipse another photo one more landing pad and the black table and one more photo all right so we have taken some photos and hit that video icon and hopefully we are taking some videos so I'm going to go ahead and leave my iPad on the table here all right so here we go ready to take off so I'm going to go ahead and arm the motors both six to the bottom and in we'll arm the motors and then we are manually taking off there you go there is no one key to take off and one key to land on this thing so you're gonna have to manually take off and check this out it is holding position fighting that small little breeze that we got going on this morning it is tilting that way a little bit because the wind is coming from that side look at that nice let's go ahead and see if we can get it angry oh yeah there you go going back to the Spot that it was hovering very nice and there is a breeze I'm pretty sure you guys can hear that little breeze going on very nice All right I'm assuming we are in speed number one no maybe we are not in speed number one let me check no nope. okay now we are in speed number one we got green lights in the front and red lights in the rear highly visible and speed number one seems to be pretty nice fighting the wind and very smooth no interference or no latency because we have 5g wi-fi connection and 2.4 gigahertz on the remote control so that is really nice so there's a full yaw in speed number one speed number two full yaw and full pitch 
Yeah, pretty nice flyer. Nice and smooth. Okay. Speed number three. Still nice and smooth, just a little bit more pitch. And the yaw. All in all, a very nice flyer. Very nice and smooth. Nice. All right, so let's check out some of the GPS core functions like return to home. So let's go ahead and push it out that way. We're not able to check out the one key to take off and one key to land because it does not have any. So let's go ahead and hit the return to home button. Okay, some beeping going on and the quadcopter has turned around 180 degrees and is coming back. All right, very nice. You know what? I took off from the table, so it's going to come down on the table. So I'm going to cancel out the return to home and it turning back around and it's starting to come down. So I'm gonna cancel the return to home and it just stops in its tracks. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and land it on my landing pad first. Usually I am testing out the one key to land and then I start my GPS return to home function. So we have a new home point. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down and it does stick the landing and the motors turn off. Right, so I'm gonna put the clock out there right in the middle of the landing pad. So that is the new home point. I'm in the motors and taking off. Ooh, there's another plane passing by high up. Okay. Here we go, return to home. All right, rising up in altitude, a preset altitude, and it is heading its way back. And the remote is sending out a beep. Okay, pretty much right above the landing pad, and it is turning around, and it wastes no time coming down. Fighting the wind coming down to make sure it's going to land straight on top of where it took off and it comes to a hover, rests there for a little bit for a while and then it starts to descend and looks like it's going to miss the home point about maybe one quadcopter distance away. So very nice. All right. So there you go, that is the behavior of the return to home. And I'm in the motors once again. Let's go ahead and check out the fail safe return to home. And to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the remote control to simulate that we are disconnected. So let me go ahead and, oops, wrong button, sorry. I have canceled out the return to home, but it did make a full 180 turn. Let me send it out a little bit more. Here's the on and off switch. Turning off the power to the remote control. And check it out. It has already sensed it and it is coming back. And it also did a 180 turn also. There you go. Nice. So carefree flying guys, you get disconnected, the quadcopter will return to home. Next up, once it lands, we'll test out to see whether or not we can reconnect while the quadcopter is coming back from a fail safe return to home. So we got 15 to 18 minutes of flight time and hopefully we do. So we are going to be able to test out all of these type of functions. And this time around, we are about three quadcopter distances away, which is still very nice. Put it in the middle of the landing pad once again. Let me go ahead and turn on the transmitter and see if we got automatically reconnected. There you go, automatically reconnected. All right. 
Okay, once again, sending it out. And you gotta test out these core functions of all of these GPS quadcopters to make sure that it functions correctly and that you can fly it with a peace of mind. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the transmitter and while it's coming back, I'm gonna turn it back on to retake control and see what happens. Turning off the remote. Rising up in altitude and it's going to make a 180 and it's going to start coming back. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on right now. Reconnect it. Okay, but it is continuing to proceed with the return to home function, the fail safe return to home. So I'm going to hit the return to home button to see whether I can reconnect nope I'm not able to reconnect it will continue coming down so I'm not able to get out of the fail safe return to home there we go I hit the return to home button and I do believe I have regained control yes we are able to regain control so let me do that one more time that was kind of iffy there it kind of didn't want to work but it worked so let's go do that one more time Turning off the remote, takes about three seconds, yeah, okay, turning the remote back on, it is still proceeding, I'm not able to regain control with the push of a button of the remote return to home, it is still coming down, so you're going to have to wait there you go now now I am able to so while it's coming down you are able to regain control so you're gonna have to let it play out so if you are really far away and I'm not sure what the control distance is on this thing and if you lose connection once it is coming back you're gonna have to wait all the way until it comes all the way above the takeoff spot its home point and once it starts to come down, you are able to regain control of the quadcopter. All right, so working pretty good. Okay, there's some kind of beep going on. It stopped. Let me go ahead and see if I can do some FPV with this thing. Let's see how good the control distance is. I'm still recording and it looks like I got 62% left on the battery am i screen recording i'm not screen recording oh great sorry about that guys there we go screen is recording now 62 percent left on the battery so this thing's got very good flight time as well all right so let me push it out there is the 100 meter bush and i do believe i'm in speed number three so i'm gonna go down in speed Nope, I'm in speed number three now. Speed number two. All right. So let's go on over to the 100 meter bush. So far, so good. Okay. Hello, 100 meter bush. Okay, there's some kind of beep going on. I'm not sure what that is. Slowly starting to lose connection no all right so what is it doing now there's like the 150 meter bush a little more beyond 150 meters and it did do a little wobble there i'm continuing to push it out and it's bobbing up and down okay so i'm still pushing it and it's still continuing to go Let's see how far I can go. But it is sending me a couple of beeps each time. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, still going though. So it has pretty good distance. So I'm gonna continue to push it until I hit that road, that dirt road. That should be close to 400 meters. 
And we still got good battery life here. We got 49%. Okay, bobbing up and down. I'm still pushing it. I'm gonna go to speed number three. Okay, the beeping got really quick now, so I'm not sure what's going on. Is it doing a return to home? A let go of the pitch. I don't think anything is happening. We are a distance of 301 meters, height of 12 meters. Nope. I don't have control and the battery life indicator has turned yellow so it is beeping so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it back because it's not coming back I don't have any control so let me pull the sticks back and yes it is heading its way back okay I got control of it let me do a yaw yep and go forward instead now it's doing a return to home. As I can see here, the return to home icon has turned red. So it is doing a automatic return to home now at battery percent of 29. I guess when it hit 30% perhaps. Okay, and it's beeping away. So it warns you that the battery is starting to get low and then when it hits about 30%, it will do a return to home. So this will be the first phase of low voltage return to home. And now it's just beeping solid. It's coming back and I see it coming back. So pretty good so far. All of the functions are working pretty decent. Okay, low voltage return to home. Let's see if I can get out. Nope. It is continuing to do its return to home function. Okay, I hit the return to home button and it has stopped descending. But all of the lights are still flashing. So we are in low voltage. I am able to regain control of the quadcopter and fly around. And the battery life indicator is at 13 and there's a warning. Now the drone is in low battery status. If fly again, it will not be able to return home automatically and may cause loss. Okay, so you are able to fly around and once the battery gets fully depleted, it will not return to home. It will probably land in its spot. So let's just go ahead and finish that off and check to make sure that it does safely land itself at its position at the moment of complete battery depletion. So pretty decent, it's just that it does not have a second phase of low voltage where it returns to home. So it is low voltage and it did kind of hit the ground of battery sag while I was flying around but we are still able to fly around. So it is a good idea to land your aircraft at this time. And now it is just coming down by itself. All right. And look at that. It has stuck the landing as well. All right. There you go, guys. There is the flight time of the Potenzik D58, the test flight and review. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.